The Carabiner 98K is quite literally one of the most iconic rifles of all time. A further development of the World War I era Gewehr 98, the Carabiner 98K featured a shorter overall length and a redesigned bolt that facilitated rapid firing and allowed for the use of rifle mounted optics. Adopted as Germany's standard issue rifle in 1935, over 14.6 million rifles were produced throughout the Second World War until Germany's defeat in 1945, where millions of captured rifles were distributed across the world, where they are now a popular collector's rifle and occasionally surface in modern conflicts. Hi guys, I'm Andrew, and in this week's video, I'll take a look at Ares's other World War II bolt action rifle, the Mauser Car 98K. Over here, I have the scoped version, which includes a replica ZF-39 4x rifle scope, but like the Lee Enfield before, there's also a more affordable unscoped version for the K98 II. So right off the bat, my first impressions of this rifle is going to be its gorgeous real wood and almost full steel exterior, complete with markings denoting their mark and supposed date of manufacture. Now, I'm just going to say it, not all wood is grown equally, and the contrasting grain and coloration of this stock in particular is basically one of the best I've seen on any airsoft gun. The steel itself is robust, and with the office motto of truth, it is bloody hell, very, very solid right over here. Lends itself to a very nice hefty weight, and there is like absolutely no wobble aside from this particular label slapping about, which is pretty damn good. The front of the rifle looks and feels pretty excellent with a hooded front sight. However, it's important to note that the cleaning rod over here is non-removable and completely fixed into place. This means that you will not be able to mount any kind of bayonet onto the bayonet lug, which might be bad for realism, but certainly good for gameplay as we wouldn't want any players with anger issues getting their hands on one of those, do we? Move further to the back and you have the adjustable rear sight with adjustable elevation markings ranging from 100 meters to a staggering 1900 meters. However, on the scope version, the iron sights only work from 300 meters and up due to the scope mount right over here obstructing the view aside from this particular elevation position. Now, just behind the rear iron sight is the hop-up adjustment dial, which requires the usage of a very small hex key in order to adjust to your desired hop. This hex key, however, is not included, so you will have to source it on your own. Now, further back are the scope mounts for the ZF-39 4x optical sight. Now, to install the scope, is quite unusual. You first have to place the scope at a 90 degree angle and then swing it down, connecting through the slots over here before using this dial to lock it into place. Now, overall, the scope itself is perfectly functional with only a few slight blemishes on this particular one on the sight picture itself. Now, adjusting the scope's elevation is easy. All you have to do is turn the elevation knob on the top right over here. However, it's important to note that there are no knobs to adjust windage and any windage adjustment can only really be done by using a flathead screwdriver to adjust the actual scope mount itself. This is very likely a bit of a pain to do, so it's highly unlikely you'll be able to adjust windage on the fly in game. So you need to keep that in mind. Now, it's also interesting to note that the markings on the ZF-39 scope over here include a deliberate misspelling of the Carl Zeiss trademarks, ostensibly due to copyright, but it will also prevent any of you cheeky fellas from trying to resell this and pass it off as the real thing. On to the bolt. Now, while the bolt pull is pretty easy, in my opinion, there is still a bit of metal friction in the initial pull. However, I will give this a pass as being a World War II rifle, having the bolt be super buttery smooth probably would act against its sort of realistic feel. However though, like the Lee Enfield, the loading mechanism of the Car 98 means you must push the bolt back into place and lock it down. Else, the bolt will bounce back 
And if it bounces back and you push it down again, that does cause a double feed. So you need to keep that in mind in game. Push the bolt back, lock it down before you fire. The trigger is frankly pretty decent. Easy take up and a solid wall with only the tiniest of mush to it before it lets out the action. Definitely one of the better triggers out there. So I definitely have no complaints here. Behind the scope is the safety and it's pretty easy, very tactile to use. Flip to the right to keep it safe and then over to the left for fire. Easy peasy. What's more and finally is the rifle has two sling mounts, one on the rear and the other one right here on the front to go and attach yourself a two point sling. The Ares K98 comes with not one, but two 20 round magazines, which in a lovely cosmetic touch are obviously made to look like bullets. Now to load the magazine, go onto the underside of the K98 and pull this latch down in order to access the magazine loading chamber. Where you simply pop that in, close it up, and then securely close it to ensure proper feeding. Now, it's important to note that inside the chamber is a leaf spring, which means that you can actually pull this down and the mag will simply pop out for you to retrieve it. However, the existence of this leaf spring makes it a little difficult to actually put it in because if you have any sort of misalignment, it could actually result in all the BBs in your magazine shooting straight out, which is a bit of an issue, I gotta admit. So all in all, the Ares Car 98K looks and feels great. But how does it shoot? Well, let's head over to the range, shall we? And time for the chrono. As usual, we are firing 0.2 gram BBs. And now for the shooting test. As usual, I'm shooting at target, dear old Jim Bob, at 30 meters. This time firing 0.3 gram BBs. So let's get to it, shall we? Safety's off. Range is hot. Let's go. All right, overall, performs just as you expect it. Very nice, smooth bolt, maybe just a little bit of friction inside it, but overall, it's a joy to shoot and looks pretty accurate. My main bother with this though, is the, is, is the height of the actual scope. Um, being this is a stock K98 stock, there's no cheat rise or anything, so, you can't actually get a proper cheat weld on this, you know? Proper cheat weld for the iron sights works great. You have a great firing position. But because of this stock, you have to basically balance your chin on the stock in order to get a decent sight picture and keep it steady. Another thing is that because of the height of the scope, you actually have to adjust the elevation quite far down in order to make sure you can, you can hit it on target. That being said, despite what I said about the lack of windage adjustment, the gun is ramrod straight. You know, the BBs are shooting straight ahead. There's no need for any windage, at least in my case. 
So overall, I am pretty impressed. We'll have to go and take a look and see how well I do. Cool, let's go. All right, let's take a look. Ooh, this is interesting. Right, so one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven, eight, I believe, and nine, and then this huge flyer over here. I can't, there's a big gap between these two and these, so I don't know if I should count them as flyers, but for the sake of integrity of my shooting, I'll keep them in anyway, so. And there we go. Um, I'll be honest, not really my best shooting. Um, but one thing it does note is that the consistency of its elevated shots show that the hop up is actually quite consistent. It's maintaining a very level, very leveling, apart from whatever the hell that was. Uh, overall, shooting performance is great. And honestly, using it is a joy. It is what we come to expect from the external quality of Aries. And yeah, I actually really quite like it. You know, it's, it's full steel. It's got a real hefty sort of weight to it. Um, the only issue is obviously ergonomic. It's due to the Car 98 platform. Um, you can't really rack it as quickly, unlike the Lee Enfield. And also that scope height really, really does a number on being able to maintain a steady sight picture. So overall, it's historically accurate and it's skirmishable. So that's a thumbs up for me. Anyway, let's get back to the studio, shall we? So there we go. Now to score the thing. On Fun Factor, we give the Ares K98 a four stars out of five. It's not the best performing sniper ever made, but it still functions very competitively and looks great in the process. On Realism, we're going to rank it a 4.5 stars out of five. The rifle looks incredible and has practically identical dimensions to the real thing. It does have a few shortcomings, like the non-removable cleaning rod and the strange springy push bolt. But all in all, for a spring rifle, this is definitely one of the best out there. Performance-wise, this rifle fires at an impressive 400 plus FPS with pretty decent accuracy. However, the unusual springy bolt close and the difficult to load magazine will negatively affect your performance on the field, giving this around about 3.5 stars out of five. On build quality, I'm gonna rank this gun a staggering five stars out of five. As I mentioned previously, the wood looks gorgeous. It's full steel, solidly built, and feels great to hold with a nice solid weight. I really cannot complain about this one one bit. On value, however, I'm going to have to rank this a two stars out of five. Unlike the previous Lee Enfield, there are quite a lot of other Car 98 models available. And with the scoped model here sitting at almost $560, this Ares is facing very stiff competition out there with one of the higher price tags available. On collectability, we're gonna give the Ares a decent four stars out of five. The Car 98 is one of the more common World War II bolt action airsoft rifles out there, but World War II is still a pretty niche era in general, so this remains one of the more exclusive guns you'll be seeing out on the field. Overall, we give the Ares Car 98K a solid four stars out of five. It has excellent externals, shoots well, but at a pretty steep price point, which is largely the same case as the previous Ares Lee Enfield, which makes sense as they are both made by Ares after all. So let's hand it over to you guys. What are your thoughts on the Ares Car 98K? Let us know in the comments section below. And for these cool products and many more, visit us at www.redwolfairsoft.com. This is Andrew, of course I'm Flood, out.